Two ways of winning the ball back for the other team. One is by tagging the ball safely. You then have to give the ball to the other team. Or by, for example, so that player might pass to this player. This one comes to press or try and win the ball. This Hello, I'm Stacey Miles. I'm a coach development officer for the Football Association. Today we've got a session around intercepting. The reason why we want our players to intercept is so that we can win the ball back to hopefully, one, stop them scoring goals, but two, so we can score more goals than the other team. So as you can see here, we've got a small sided game. I've picked an appropriate kind of size that I think would be suitable for foundation phase or youth development phase. As you can see with our layout, we've got two goals and a small sided pitch laid out. We've got one goalkeeper at each end and three outfield players. You will notice that I will have put balls around the side of the pitch so that if the ball does go out, there's a quick a moment where we can get the ball back into play. One, it's easier for you as a coach to manage, but two, we want to get the players playing. That's what they've come for. So, why do we want our players to intercept? One, we want them to recognise the opportunities when, where and how we might try and do that. Now, working with young players, we don't need to give them all the answers. We want to provide opportunities where they can experience that and make those choices and, and learn those ways. My game intercepting, the idea being it's a handball style game. Ball starts in hand, okay? The idea being the Blues are trying to throw the ball into the other team's goal. Sounds easy, however, two different ways the other team can win the ball back, okay? Now, restrictions normally with handball, you can't move. However, in my game today, I want my players to be able to move. Similar to movement with the ball, we want them to express themselves. So you can run with it. And the idea being you then throw the ball into the other team's goal for a point. Okay, sounds easy. However, they've still got to get past four players. Okay, so two ways of winning the ball back for the other team. One is by tagging the ball safely. You then have to give the ball to the other team. Or by, for example, so that player might pass to this player. This one comes to press or try and win the ball. This player recognises that this player is going to throw the ball to there. They can try, if they can, to intercept in between. Now, I know what young players are like. They are going to want to get on that ball and run and score, which they will, which we do want to encourage. However, with the topic being intercepting, the way in which I'd like to challenge them to try and recognise opportunities where they might pass, so if a teammate is in a higher position to score, the challenge I would give the team, a normal goal, by running and throwing it into the goal, you get one point. But if you can combine, say, three times or make three passes before you score, that would be then worth three points. So I'm not saying they have to, because we don't want, for example, our players here that are around the goal to think they can't score, but recognise opportunities. So if it does go there, can we make some nice little combinations in between? By encouraging them to make those extra passes, if it's necessary, with their decisions, there might then be more opportunities to recognise, for example, when they might intercept. So key things I would be looking for as a coach is body shape. So if this player is shaped up potentially to throw the ball, so it might be his or her eyes and head are up facing the person they want to pass to, their shoulders are facing that way and their ball is about to be released, that might be the moment then for an interception to be made. However, we would also like to encourage players to play with disguise. Um, so I'd like them to think about not going too early because it might be that player pretends to go that way and I know we're going to see loads of it, they will then go the other way. So that is the idea of the practice. It's really fun. All players are involved. There's elements which are realistic to the game. Why have we started ball in hands? One, so that they can get active, get fun, develop those fundamental movement skills, but then also so that they can understand and start recognising the moments to go and intercept. So normal goals e equal one. The amount of passes that you might create before scoring equals that amount of goals. Please don't restrict your players by saying they have to, because then it removes the decision making and forces the interception. How might we make this uh, simpler? We might reduce the number of players perhaps on one team. You might have safety zones. So for example, parts of the practice, you might have little areas where they're safe and they can't get tagged. 
You might have certain players, for example, if they score, it's worth extra goals. So it might be, for example, this player. You've noted this player and this player, they've scored lots of goals so far. So we might encourage this player to try and get on the ball a little bit more. So if they score, it's worth three goals, as an example. That might then encourage to recognise the interceptions, for example, going across to that way. How might I challenge players further? I might ask them to see how many times they can combine with a teammate. But also, it's a fantastic social experiment in terms of social skills that children will develop. So don't be too focused all the time on developing them technically tactically. You might focus, for example, on developing them. So can you use names when you're calling to your teammate? Can you praise a teammate? So I think those things are just as important within this intercepting practice as it would be with all of the other corners uh, that make up the player and the person.